Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel where we talk about personal finance, investing, and real estate. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, smashing that like button, subscribing if you haven't done that yet, and uh, hitting the little notification bell so that you can see all the videos that we put out. It really helps us to grow the channel. The YouTube algorithm really likes it. So I've been asked a couple of times and seen a lot on social media about uh, trying to figure out exactly what is going on with GameStop and AMC, what a short is, and how to really explain it as if I was explaining it to my kids. Because a lot of people don't understand something that they're not familiar with. And so I sort of thought today about uh, how we could e explain it and get a handle around it. And I came up with uh, the example of an apple. So if uh, imagine this, this is the way a short works. I'm going to be the short seller in this scenario. Okay, so I go to uh, somebody and I say, hey, I want to borrow your apple. Now, I don't buy the apple. I just borrow it. So I borrow the apple. Then I go to someone else and I say, hey, I have an apple for sale. Do you want to buy this apple? And I think the apple is worth $10. Do you want to buy it for $10? And they say, yeah, sure, I'll buy your apple for $10. So now they have the apple. Now, when I sell it to them, I actually think that that apple is not going to be worth $10 in the future. I think it's going to be worth $5 in the future. So in the future, my plan is when that apple goes down in value, I'm going to go and buy it back for $5. So it's mine now at $5. And then I am going to give it back to the person who I borrowed it from. And that way they have their Apple back. I have made $5, the difference between the $10 I sold it for and the $5 that I bought it back for. Okay, so then that's how the short is supposed to work. And that happens a lot. People short stocks all the time. What happened with GameStop and what's called a short squeeze is that there were some people out there who, uh, if you think about uh, GameStop being a brick and mortar store and, you know, brick and mortar has gone through this beating in the last few years where, you know, people are buying more on online and they're not going into the mall. They're not going into the shopping centers and they're just not walking into the store to buy things. And that's Macy's and Sears and, and JCPenney's and Best Buy and Circuit City and all of these stores that were huge stores that we all went to before and now we don't really go to those and we're just buying online and you know what happened in 2020 everybody's forced to go buy online we're not we can't even go if we wanted to so what's going on is the short sellers are looking at GameStop which is really still a brick and mortar store and they're saying this is an outdated model and we think this stock is going to go down so they went and they got GameStop, they borrowed it from somebody and they said, we think GameStop right now, it's trading at $10, but in the future, we think it's going to be worth $5. So we're going to sell it for 10 today and they sell it to somebody for $10. And then they're betting that in the future, when the stock drops, that they can then get it back for $5 and then turn around and give it back to the person who they borrowed it from. And in that scenario, they would have made $5 by short selling GameStop. Now, where's the problem come in? The problem is that there are people outside of, this is called a short chain. There are people outside of the short chain who looked at GameStop and they said, you know what? GameStop is really not as bad as people think. GameStop is kind of on a turnaround cycle. And we think because the guy from Chewy, Ryan Cohen, is getting involved, and they're gonna he he wants to turn the company around, and they're gonna make a bigger online presence, and they've got digital download revenue sharing going uh, with uh, Microsoft and with other game makers, and so we think as investors that GameStop is actually gonna go up, and more than that, we think because it has been shorted, the shorts have actually driven the price down more than it should have gone down. And so we, the outside investors, are going to go buy as much GameStop as we can 
because it is cheap right now and we think it's going to go up. So that's what happened. And when all of those people started going out and buying this uh, GameStop, buying this Apple, then the person at the end who bought the Apple, not the short seller, not the person who owned it but lent it out, but the short seller borrowed it from, but the person in the end who bought the Apple and owns it for $10, now they are seeing the price go up instead of down. What happens to the short seller in that situation is <laughs> the person who they borrowed the Apple from in the beginning is saying, hey, I want my Apple back because now it's worth more than it was when I let you borrow it. But the problem is that the short seller in the middle doesn't have the Apple anymore, so they have to go get the Apple back. And I thought I was going to be able to get that Apple for $5 when I shorted it, but now I can't even get it for $10. i have got to go out and I've got to pay $15 for the Apple. So I go to the guy that I sold the Apple to and I say, hey, I want to buy that Apple back for $15. And that guy says, I don't think so. I think, I think this Apple is going to be worth a lot more in the future. I think GameStop is going to go up because of all this turnaround news. So I'm just going to hang on. The short seller's in the middle and he goes, um, I really need that Apple. I've got to turn it back into this guy over here though. I borrowed it from. Um, I will give you $20 for that share of GameStop. And he says, no, nope, I'm going to hold on to it. And then he says, I oh, really, I, seriously, I need that Apple. I'll give you $30 for it. And the guy over here says, no, it's really a nice shiny Apple. I think it's going to be worth a lot in the future. I think I'm going to just hang on to it. And this guy in the middle is getting phone calls from this guy over here who wants his Apple back. And he's saying, hey, you need to give me my Apple or I'm going to cut you off and you're never going to get any more apples from me again in the future. And he's like, oh man, my whole business relies on getting these apples and selling them short. So I got to get this Apple back. So I go out and I say, I need, I'm going to pay you $50 for your Apple. And finally this guy says, 50 bucks? Yeah, I'll do that. So I get the Apple back and oh my goodness, I borrowed this Apple. I sold it for $10. So I made $10 and I thought I was going to buy it back for five and give it back, which would have stuck $5 in my pocket. But instead I sold it for that $10 thinking I was going to buy it back for five. And I ended up having to pay 50 for this Apple. So between the 10 that I sold it for and the 50 I had to buy it for, that's a $40 loss on this one Apple. And now I don't even get to keep the Apple. I've got to take the Apple that I borrowed and give it back to the person who I borrowed it from. I lost $40 on that one short Apple. Now imagine doing that, not on one Apple, not on one share of GameStop, but on millions of shares of GameStop. If you're some of these big hedge funds that were betting against GameStop that it was going to go down, they had millions of shares of GameStop that they had shorted. And they shorted it back when it was $10 or $12, $5. I mean, in July of last summer, it was $5. And they were shorting. And now... Look where GameStop is. It's up over $300 today. So those guys are really taking a beating. But that's what a short is. I hope that that was a pretty simple little explanation with this Apple about how this one Apple can get borrowed, shorted, and then cause me a lot of problems in the middle if I'm the short seller. So thanks for uh, taking a look at the video today. Do me a favor if you got some information out of this or some entertainment. Uh, smash that like button for me and hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. It's going to help us uh, to grow the channel. The YouTube algorithm really loves it. And don't forget, by the way, if you want to get in on the action and buy some uh, stocks, maybe apples, maybe game stock, maybe who knows what, whatever you think is a good investment, do me a favor. Check out the link down below in the description for Webull. You can get four free stocks from Webull when you deposit $100 on the platform, and they'll give me a free stock too. So I appreciate that. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.